Jack and the Beanstalk, Part 2 Goodness gracious, it's my husband, said the giant's wife. What on earth shall I do? Quick, jump in here. And Jack jumped into the oven just as the giant came in. He was a big one, to be sure. He had three cows tied to his belt. He threw them down on the table and said rudely to his wife, Here, wife, cook me a couple of these for breakfast. But wait, what's this I smell? Fee-fi-fo-fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Now, dear, said his wife, it's nothing but the leftover smell of that little boy you had for dinner yesterday. Go along and wash up, and by the time you come back, I'll have breakfast ready. So the giant went off, and Jack was about to jump out of the oven when the woman whispered, Wait till he's asleep. He's always had a nap after breakfast. The giant gulped down his breakfast. Then he went to a giant chest and took out two big bags. He sat down, and from the bags he took out piles of gold coins. He began to count them very slowly. One. Two. Uh, three. Um, uh, four. Then his head began to nod, and soon he began to snore, so that the whole house shook. Jack crept out of the oven, tiptoed past the giant, grabbed one of the bags of gold, which he could barely lift, and ran lickety-split back to the beanstalk. He threw down the bag of gold, which fell kerplunk into his mother's garden, then climbed down until at last he reached the ground. Well, mother, he said, wasn't I right about the beans? They really are magic. For a while, Jack and his mother bought what they needed, and a little more, with the bag of gold. But at last, the bag was empty. So Jack made up his mind to try his luck again at the top of the beanstalk. He climbed, and he climbed, and he climbed. And once again, sure enough, there was the great tall woman standing on the doorstep of her house. And once again, he asked for something to eat. Go away, boy, said the woman, or else my husband will eat you for breakfast. But say, aren't you the youngster who came here once before? Do you know, on that very day my husband lost one of his bags of gold? Did he now? said Jack. How very strange. Maybe I could help you find it. But I'm so hungry that first I must have something to eat. So the great tall woman gave him something to eat. But he had barely taken a bite when thump, 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 they heard the giant's footsteps. Once again, the wife hid Jack in the oven. It all happened as it had before. In came the giant bellowing, fee fi fo fum then, after gulping down three broiled oxen for breakfast, the giant said, Wife, bring me my hand and my golden harp. The wife brought them. The giant looked at the hand and barked, Lay. Then the hen laid an egg, all of gold. Then the giant looked at the golden harp and said, Sing. And the golden harp sang beautifully, and went on singing until the giant fell asleep and started snoring like thunder. Jack sneaked out of the oven and crept like a mouse on his hands and knees. Then he crawled up the table, 
grabbed the hand and the golden harp and dashed toward the door. But the hand began to cluck, and the harp called out, Master! Master! The giant woke up just in time to see Jack running away with his treasures. Jack ran as fast as he could, and the giant came bounding after him and would have caught him, only Jack had a head start. When Jack got to the beanstalk, he climbed down as fast as he could. The giant reached the beanstalk and stopped short. He didn't like the idea of climbing down such a ladder. But like it or not, the giant swung himself down onto the beanstalk, which shook with his weight. By this time, Jack had climbed down and reached home. Mother, he cried, give me an axe, hurry. His mother came rushing out with an axe in her hand. She ran with Jack to the beanstalk, and then she screamed with fright as she saw the giant making his way down. Jack swung the axe and gave a chop at the beanstalk. The giant felt the beanstalk shake, and he stopped to see what was the matter. Jack gave another chop, and another, and another, and the beanstalk began to tumble over. Then the giant fell down and broke his crown, and the beanstalk came tumbling after. From then on, Jack and his mother had all the money and music they wanted. For the hen gave them golden eggs, and the harp sang for them all day long. And they lived happily ever after. Mm -hmm.